finalists last year. Can Rajasthan Royals continue their dream run this year as well? If you look at the structure of their side, not much has changed. They've brought in a few players, they've let go a few players, but the core of last year, the way the team was set up, six people will bat, five will bowl, that hasn't changed. And so the roles are very clearly defined. This year, Rajasthan Royals have to go the distance. They've got to continue playing exactly the way they did last year. Can they use the impact sub? Because the impact sub works very well in teams of specialists. We'll take a look at that as we go along. But let's look at the construct of that side. One of the all-time white ball greats to open the batting. All-time IPL greats, without a doubt, but one of the all-time white ball greats. Here's someone who, after 54 games as an opener, is averaging 45 at a strike rate of 150, hits hundreds as well when he gets set, can play in two forms. Either he can go boom, boom, boom at the start, or as we are seeing a little bit more these days, just take a little bit of time and then explode and bat all the way through to the end. Joss Butler is the fulcrum, is the entity around which this Rajasthan Royals team is built and he's got a huge role to play. He might actually enjoy not being captain because his reign as England captain in the white ball game has been a bit turbulent. Just switch off from being the leader and come and bat. Maybe that is what Joss Butler's role will be. The benefit for Butler here is that this slim young left-hander who's opening the batting with him has been in tremendous form. Yashasvi Jaiswal will then go and play the role of the enforcer at the top. They've got options there. They can actually go with Padikal as well. But Jaiswal has been in fantastic form. So Jaiswal and Butler can form a fantastic opening pair. And then comes the batter everybody is talking about. And that is Sanju Samson. I thought injury robbed him of an opportunity to go and play at the highest level a little bit more. Hasn't played since the 3rd of January. But Sanju Samson has much more to do than just take Rajasthan Royals into the playoffs because there are places opening up for that number three, number four slot. He has a big IPL, then there's slots opening up in the India camp as well. So Sanju Samson will want to get a lot more out of this IPL. If he is on song, wow. I mean, he just takes that strike rate up to another level. Fabulous displayer of spin bowling. Will sit back and hit the fast bowlers too. And then this particle to follow. And Shimron Hetmeyer. Shimron Hetmeyer has got a troubled life off the field. Troubled in the sense that he's available sometimes. He's not available. Missed out on the T20 World Cup. The loss was the West Indies. But there was nothing they could do given the circumstances. And then what does he do after the T20 World Cup? really does well in the ILT20 and as a left-handed finisher, there are very few of his class going around in world cricket. So Hetmeyer at five and that gives you a pretty solid top five. Three left-handers in there, two very aggressive right-handers. Jaiswal has a big IPL, that top five is looking really good. Then you look at the bottom five. You can see that they're a little worried about that bridge player at number seven. Six and seven are the bridge players. And those players, Riyan Parag, last year they tried Ashwin over there. A word about Riyan Parag. He's been around for a long time now. Split for 30, 32 games. He's only averaging 14, strike rate just about 120. That's not good enough. I know number six is a very difficult slot because sometimes you only get six or seven balls. You take two or three balls to get set. But Riyan Parag at number six, if he's going to continue batting at number six, has now got to make that role his own and become explosive. Interesting talking to Sangakara about this when we were working together a little while ago. And he said the brief for Riyan Parag was very clear. Go back to Assam, bowl a lot of overs and bat at number four. And so this year, after hearing what uh, Sangakara told me, I used to look at Assam whenever I went on to the Krikba side to see domestic cricket. The one thing that I liked was that he was playing a dominant role at four, but he was bowling 25, 30, 35 overs sometime. Because in this Rajasthan Royal setup, number six has to deliver. He has to give them two, sometimes three overs per game. So if he can do that, this could be a make or break here because I do not see them having a lot more patience. They've backed him, but I don't see them having a lot more patience. So that's number six. We need a breakout year from Riyan Parag because he also contributes in the field, remember, very good in the deep. There's been a lot of talk about how much he says versus how much he does. He's a young man, it's an Instagram generation, but if he has a big season with bat and ball, everything else takes care of itself. Now they realize they've got a problem at seven and that is why the addition of Jason Holder. 
they see Jason Holder as someone who will bowl maybe at the top through the middle, maybe bowl all the way down to 17th or 18th over, but give them those runs at 7. And I suspect they've gone with reputation rather than recent form and they hope that Jason Holder can put aside his recent form as a batter in T20 cricket and be that finisher that they so desperately need. What can they do if they don't have Jason Holder? They would have liked Donovan Ferreira to play that role, but there's not enough bowling in Ferreira to be able to bat at seven, given that there's not a lot of bowling in the top six. I see Ferreira more as a backup for Shimron Hetmeyer. Then you've got some really good bowling. Trent Bolt remains one of the best bowlers in the power play. I see them using maybe Obed McCoy as a replacement for Jason Holder if they find they've got an issue with the death. Because Kuldeep Sen did really well for them last year. But to expect Kuldeep Sen to be day in, day out, the death bowler is still maybe asking a little too much of him. And they want a big season again from Chehel. Chehel is just one of the IPL's great characters and one of the IPL's great bowlers. You look year upon year upon year, Chehel is giving you 20 wickets. And last year, they asked a little bit more of Chehel. He delivered 27 wickets last year. So Chehel and Ashwin, that's a really solid spin bowling core. Ashwin will contribute a bit with the bat. They want Bowl to have a big here, Kuldeep Sen. So that is how the construct of that side is now. Now let's come to the impact sub. When you've got a team of specialists, you want the impact sub to play a bigger part. They've got three options with the ball. If they want to sub someone like a Padikal, maybe they can go with KM Asif. Maybe they can go with Sandeep Sharma, who's just come in for Prasid Krishna. Or if the track is turning a little bit, they want an extra spin bowler, they've got Kariyappa in their ranks. As a sub, he'll probably need to bowl two, three overs. They can do that. What if they need a batting sub? There's not a lot of Indian options there. Been hearing good things about Abdul Basit from Kerala. So maybe they can use him as a sort of 8-10 ball batter in place. Maybe sub a Chahel or uh, after he's finished bowling or even sub a Kuldeep Sen and use an Abdul Basit. But there's not a lot there. If the top 6-7 bat were, they really don't need that sub. Can they make the playoffs, Rajasthan Royals? How many of you thought they'd make the playoffs last year? Butler, Samson, Edmire, they've got big season, they chase totals down, they've got a decent bowling, they can. They'll be one of those sides that I suspect you'll wait till the last week to see if they're going to make it, but happy to be proven wrong. Join us on Quick Buzz Live for all the fun and insights this year. If you're in the Middle East or North Africa, if you're in continental Europe or Latin America, do subscribe to Quick Buzz Plus to see the Tata IPL 2023 live.